welcome to Ryanair First Class. A whole row of seats just for you. So before checking into the Airbnb, I'm gonna make the most of my time. I'm gonna go find a market as quickly as possible and go have a look around. Now that is a shop. So I wasn't walking five minutes before I came across a market. My approach to these things is usually to go in, case the joint, and then see what I need. I'll see what comes to me. So uh, I'll go in, I'll do a few circuits, and then I'll tell you my thoughts, I think. You too, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bon, merci. Straight off the bat, straight off the bat, find duck sausage. I've never seen a duck sausage before and I don't think I've ever seen this many duck related products. So I think I might uh, head out. I know there's another market around here somewhere. So before jumping the gun, I'm gonna head to the supposedly famous market of Victor Hugo. I'll see what we can find. This is quite exciting. <laughs> so I've just hit the Victor Hugo market and I've had some time to think on the way over. Thinking I'm going to do that beautiful duck sausage with a series of accompaniments like fried butter beans, crispy garlic, maybe some mushrooms, tarragon. Something along those lines, and we'll see how it turns out. There is so much here, it is unbelievable. I was told that uh, the food in Toulouse was better than anywhere, at least in France. And I'm starting to think that they weren't wrong. Unbelievable, I'm definitely, definitely coming back. the secret to a uh, choosing a good Airbnb. This one is absolutely lovely and it comes with a cat. A very, very friendly cat. Listen to this purr. 
We're going to sit here for a little bit. We're going to debrief, just take a bit of time, and then uh, I'll get around to the cooking. I'll give you a tour too. This place is pretty amazing. Check it out. So, first off, and perhaps most importantly, we've got a cooktop. Four burners. I haven't tested them yet, but let's hope they all work. This is pretty much all I need to get things done, aside from some cookware. Let's check it out. And so, we're down into the cookware drawer. Now, usually, this has been a stark underperformer. However, two frying pans. One pot, we've got strainers in there. I've got everything I need almost. Let's check out the knife situation. As far as the cutlery drawer goes, you know what? We're doing all right. I think they do a bit of cooking here. Bit of a ceramic knife. Sort of so sharp, but I'm not doing too much cutting. I took a gamble and it paid off. Finally, the lighting in the kitchen. It's not half bad either. I don't usually expect it to be this good, but I'm cooking in the middle of the day and I've got some decent windows just behind the camera. So I should be able to get some decent shots. And with the food I've got, I've got no excuse. All right, so here's the deal. I've got this lovely duck sausage. It's got a beautiful shape to it. I'm going to fry it like that and it's going to be the foundation for my dish. But the trick is going to be how do I decorate it? How do I embellish those beautiful duck flavors? I'm going to start off with potatoes. These are tiny little potatoes and they're going to be chopped up, boiled, fried until they're nice and crispy. I'm going to scatter them on top along with fried garlic. I'm going to try and get some nice fine slivers of that, get it nice and crispy too. That's going to complement the potato. I'm going to use a bit of sweetness. Now these are lovely little pears. What I'm going to do with this pear is I'm going to finely slice it and get it nice and small. Try and pair it up with this duck. I find that duck goes really well with sweet things. Typically it's orange, but I'm going to change it up a little bit. I've also got mushrooms. Uh, small, little mushrooms. Simple saute with these. They're going to stand out anyway. Mushrooms I find to be of quite a strong flavor. I've also got radishes. They're going to provide a nice peppery element to my dish. Wherever possible, I like to try and find like a, a nice alternative to using pepper. I don't know if that really makes sense, but like if you can find those flavors in vegetables, I prefer to add those than just to put pepper on something. So yeah, not bad. Finally, we've got parsley. Gave this to me for free, and we've also got some uh, tarragon. Now, I'm a big fan of tarragon at the moment. I went, specifically went out looking for it. It's got such a distinct flavor. So with this, I hope to sort of weave that through the dish on quite a few levels. I want some fresh tarragon herbs on there at the end, but I also want to infuse it into the dish and work it into finally, well, not finally, actually. I'm going to do some uh, haricot beans as well. I'm going to drain these. And then I'm going to give them a light fry in olive oil as well. I want them to mirror the texture of the potato, but I want them to have a really nice salty kick to it. The final part though will be using this little bit of vinegar to deglaze the pan and along with a bit of vegetable stock provide a nice sauce just hidden underneath the bottom so you get a little pop of sauce with every bite. We'll see how we go. Okay, so I've changed my mind a little bit. What I've gone for is a one pan wonder. So we've got the haricot beans, the mushrooms, and the radishes all in the one pan. And I'm also gonna add the potatoes in there as well. And get everything just like a little bit crispy, a little bit delicious, and a little bit more simple. I think it's time I start doing things that are 
a little bit easier to recreate and don't take a thousand steps. I think it's quite suitable for an Airbnb. I'll put the tarragon in there as well and I think that that will come along really nicely. So here's how it all went down. We've got a um, few adjustments to what I said I was going to do. And I think I, the dish is better for it. So basically what we've got is we've got a lovely gravy. It's a quite a mild gravy. It's just sort of there as like a slight background note. In it we've got a beautiful spiral of uh, duck sausage. Absolutely delicious and in between the spirals I've worked in some um, a delicious pear. That pear is like super ripe, super juicy. Then on top, you can see this is where I've made the biggest adjustment. I've gone and I've, instead of cooking all the ingredients separately, then bringing them together at the end, I've gone all in one frying pan. I think by doing that, I've helped like meld the flavors together a bit better. I think we're gonna have a pretty delicious meal. So I'm fairly happy with the result. I got a good picture too. All right, let's eat. Yep, that's tasty. Here's one thing I didn't know about myself. I like doors and windows. Having them, of course, but also looking at them. In France, they seem to have them mastered. out of 10, which is about the high score you can give something. Just these winding streets lined with coffee and culture and some of the best food I've tried. Absolutely incredible. I mean, this is just a tiny little alley. And you look at the architecture up top. And then you turn things around and suddenly you're in the middle of everything and it's fucking amazing. Do you know where we're parked, Lucas? <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> Do you have confidence that he knows where he's parked? Now. Yeah, yeah. I'm no, no I'm sure, confident, I'm sure. no. No, no, no not confidence. so much confidence. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no. sure. Have you, have you, are you making a habit of this? Are you confident? <laughs> <laughs> Every week, maybe. Every week. No, <laughs> we're going this way. Okay. Oh, you can say Rue André Mercadier. Rue André Mercadier. Yeah, a little bit uh, Italian accent. Oh, no!